I think a lot of people, when they don't understand, they, they ask questions and they say, well, what's the use of this? And why are we um, funding this? And, you know, are we getting credits to bring money into the school? And is it worth it? And, and what happened is, uh, um, Brianne Link was very, very smart about this and she invited um, staff in to see. And when we started to understand some of the things that were going on in students' lives and that they needed that support and in order for them to be successful in the classroom, then um, with the supports they began to be successful. Teachers began to understand it, then they began to support it, and then it just became embedded into the culture of the school because everyone saw the benefit. So, I mean, understanding why and being able to develop those relationships with students. And one of the best things that came about from this room is that students don't always communicate verbally. Like, you know, that's a, that's a skill and that's a competency where these students were able to communicate artistically and when they were able to get their feelings and their issues out then the competency of, of communication with the teacher um, and then the teacher would say this is an issue we need to administration support we need a counseling support and then we could move to the next level so I mean that understanding of why it's important to support the mental health issues which I think have been for a long time swept under a carpet and a lot of these students have been struggling but you know now you're seeing them blossoming you know we've got valedictorians coming out of this class you know we have students that were on the verge of completely dropping out you know are on the honor roll so I mean the data speaks and so once we got past that understanding then it solidified this room some parents I would say a small number but some parents felt that like you know you just need to learn to cope we're not gonna baby these kids and and pander to them this is not healthy some teachers said oh my gosh are you kidding we're doing yet another thing for those people who aren't gonna go anywhere or do anything because that's how they're marginalized and um, you know when you look around and you see what is possible when you tap into that incredible creativity and and love I would say honestly what is in us as humans um, when you when you take the time to connect with someone and let them know that they matter um, who knows what can happen and that's the magic for me. We've presented in a lot of places where there are people who just go, what? What is arts? What is art therapy? What is that? So I answer that question a lot. I feel like there are the people on one side of the scale that 110% buy in, believe it, see the value. And there's the other side that goes, mm. So in presenting and preparing our program after the pilot, we had to basically prove that it works. And when you stop and think about that for a second, how do you prove that an emotional type program works? How do I actually prove that? So of course student voice was huge and we came up with a, a Likert type scale that we used to gather student um, data and information and we have all that. Attendance was a big one so we were able to mark attendance improvements. Grades of course were an easy one as well, their grades improved. Um, so some people are like data numbers people so I found that I had success with those people saying okay here and I give them the graphs and the data numbers, they see that it works. Like I could not bring myself to go to school and finally at one point I just stopped, just before Christmas. I didn't even make it like a whole semester. And then coming to this school in grade 10 and being in a place where people are so understanding and actually they care about you and they want you to succeed and they'll go through anything to help you is so amazing and so fantastic and I honestly I couldn't see myself ever changing schools just like my dad said earlier like I mean I wasn't sure if I wanted to come back to Cochrane High because I had a really um, really bad summer one of my friends passed away who went here and it was it was horrible but coming back here and having the support from all the teachers and coming and having this room and all the students was just it's exactly what I needed to actually help me move on and help me realize that there's so much more than just grief. That there's reliving memories through other people and just using it as an experience to grow on and just become a bigger person. And this room is honestly the only reason that I'm still here at the school. Yeah. I think for me it's an entirely unique experience. I, I came out as queer quite quite a long time. It's been two years, I think it's been a long time now. And at first that was a really freaky topic for a lot of people to try and address the, well, what do you mean? And 
wait, what? Was sort of the response I got online. And then especially, especially the further in we got, people started to get afraid. They didn't really understand what I was getting at. Um, and I just got victimized a lot. Um, and it didn't happen publicly. I mean, it was all in, you know, private group chats that happened behind my back, but it ended up breaking up entire friend groups that I had known since kindergarten. And I just got mistreated horribly because of who I was. And then you had to come to school on top of that and sit in a classroom with those people and be expected to learn at the same rate as you did before any of this traumatizing event happened. So that's, that would be the different online factor. <laughs> when I really get to know the kids and the ones that really open up, I think, I'm an adult and that would be challenging for me. You're a teenager going through that. It's even more difficult. So. I feel so, so lucky that the students trust in the program and trust in conversations with me um, that there's this whole other rewarding side of my job that I really don't think very many teachers get. I am literally given the time in here to spend with students, to have those conversations and to understand them where I think teachers in other programs in teaching math or science, they are busy teaching curriculum. They don't have the time that I fortunately get to really get to know the kids. So um, I'm a mom as well. And so I just, I think of my own children sometimes and, and what I've learned here, giving guidance and support to these students and how that affects the guidance and support I try and give my own children. I've learned from that as well. Um, but I guess I, I guess I was surprised at how much they're dealing with. I knew they were dealing with stuff, but I didn't know it was at this level for some of them. So the fact that they're even at school can be surprising. They're successful at school. A lot of them have really, really good grades. It's what they're doing to get those grades. Do you have the balance in your life, emotionally, mentally, academically? If you have that balance, you've won. And 90s is successful to one student to celebrate, but 60s is successful to another student. So to me, like I said, you don't measure high school success, in my opinion, based solely on marks. If you can graduate from this high school and look back and think, I really enjoyed my high school experience, I did succeed academically, but I also left with some good friends. I also left understanding myself. I feel ready to go out into the world. I can speak for myself. I have that confidence. That balance is really the winner, not the kid necessarily who got the top grade but can't speak for themselves and doesn't have the connections that other kids in the school were able to make. Um, so I, I say it all the time, but I, like, I love my job. I love my job because of these guys. Thank you.